Please rise. Good afternoon. We welcome you to this time of worship as we, as we gather together and share the joy of Adam and Callie on this day of their wedding. We begin our time in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We begin our service with the singing of hymn the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. We sing the first three verses. This, this hymn is included with your program. We are here in the sight of God and his people to rejoice with Callie and Adam as they bring their lives, as they begin their lives as husband and wife. God established marriage at the beginning of time as a blessing to the man and woman he created, and he continues to guide and bless those he unites in marriage. Moses spoke about the marriage of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. The Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. 
And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Marriage was part of God's perfect creation, but Adam and Eve rebelled against God and brought sin into the world. Sadly, the tragedy of sin also has affected marriage and the home. But in love, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to save the world from sin. Through faith in Jesus, God forgives us and unites us to Christ as members of his family. God intends marriage to reflect the union of Christ and his people. He instructs husbands to imitate his unconditional and self-sacrificing love. He urges wives to reflect the Christian's joyful respect and submission to Jesus. St. Paul described this relationship in his letter to the Ephesians. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Our Savior's love for us empowers us to love one another. Husbands and wives grow in love as they live in the love of Christ. St. John wrote in his first letter, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We love because he first loved us. God intends the union of husband and wife to bring mutual happiness, to offer help and support in times of sadness and joy and when it is his will to provide a home where children can grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, all who enter marriage ought to do it reverently, thoughtfully, and in keeping with the purposes for which God gave it. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, in the beginning you created man and woman and established marriage by your design and wisdom. Look with favor on Adam and Callie, who come to you seeking your blessing on their marriage. Guide them with your word, that with genuine faithfulness and unwavering love for one another, they may honor and keep the promises they make today. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Our lessons for today. are taken from Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. He answered, Haven't you read that from the beginning their maker made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will be one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, man must not separate. Our second passage is from Ephesians chapter 4. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven us. Therefore, be imitators of God as his dearly loved children, and walk in love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We hear Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Dear friends gathered today, and especially you, the bride and groom-to-be, grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Adam and Kelly chose the shepherd's psalm as the text for their wedding devotion. And this is the first time in all the years of my ministry that this has been the text that was chosen. But it's a very fitting one. It serves as a comforting reminder of the blessed relationship each believer has with their Lord and as a confident confession of what both of you as individuals have received from their good shepherd and king and what you will continue to receive as a couple. We want to take a few moments now to focus on the different facets of how God has and will continue to bless you as his believing children. I shall not want. You learned as children to go to the Lord in prayer, to, to place your needs and desires before him and trust that he was going to answer you as believers in the way that he knew was best for you. You've had your needs provided for, and you have thanked God for all of his goodness to you. The green pastures and still waters that David referred to point to that good news that Jesus brought about in due time. He removed the burden of sin from us by being our guilt offering on the cross. He took away our troubled consciences by being our perfect substitute. We enjoy peace in this troubled world through the faith the Holy Spirit has planted in us. That is something you can enjoy all your days. As the, soul con as the Spirit continues His work in us, He restores your souls. Through the gospel and word and sacrament, He continues to strengthen your faith in your Savior and your hope in God's gracious promises for time and for eternity. He continues to move you to want and to do of His good pleasure, which is the path that leads to eternal life. I'm sure that when you were taught the Lord's Prayer, you learned that the seventh petition was a request that God would, would guard you against and deliver you from evil of both a physical and a spiritual nature. As a result, you join with the writer in saying, I will fear no evil. You trust God's promise to always be with you and are reminded by John in his first epistle that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The tools at the Lord's disposal to pull you out of harm's way and to defend you are mighty. The focus of the next verse shifts from Jesus as our good shepherd to Jesus as our victorious king, showing how he is in control and how lavishly he treats us as his brothers and sisters through faith. He prepares a table before you, the richest affair. He anoints your head with oil, treating you as honored guests, and as a result, your cup overflows. We confess in Luther's explanation to the first article of the Creed that God provides for all our needs richly and daily. He, he blesses us, and that takes in so much more than, than food and drink and house and home, doesn't it? When God created man, he pronounced that it was not good for the man to be alone, and he made Eve as Adam's suitable azer his partner, his helper. Then he instituted marriage and brought them together. The Apostle Paul notes that although he did not feel the need to be married, most people feel the desire for the love and companionship that is found in marriage. And that is something you both felt, which moved you to look for that person with whom you could share your life. The Lord moved Solomon to write, the man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Marriage is and will continue to be a blessing for those who enter into it as long as this world endures, and especially for those who enter into it knowing it is a relationship where the husband and wife commit themselves to one another in connection with Christ and live within that married state imitating Jesus' relationship to his bride, the church. And you are going to symbolically be demonstrating that in a few moments with, with your project. As you have the blessing of marriage added to all else that the Lord richly provides you, you too can surely say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our lives as long as you live together in the world. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
knowing that by saving faith, you will both, by God's grace, inherit life eternal as children of God. Friends and family gathered today to share in your joy as you take each other to be one flesh in the sight of God and man. I can't think of a better gift than to give yourselves to each other and celebrate the birth of our Christ as newlyweds, looking forward to a life of sharing those blessings of marriage, the gift of God which keeps on giving. Amen. Adam and Callie, you have come here to be united in marriage, which consists in your mutual consent, freely and sincerely given. I invite you to declare this intent in the presence of God and this assembly. Adam, will you have Callie to be your wife, to live with her in marriage, according to the word of God? Will you love her, honor her, Support her and be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. If so, answer, I will. I will. Callie, will you have Adam to be your husband, to live with him in marriage according to the word of God? Will you love him, honor him, support him, and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Join your hands and make your promises to each other. I, Adam, in the presence of God and this assembly, take you, Callie, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death parts us. I, Callie, in the presence of God and this assembly, take you, Adam, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death parts us. Exchange rings now as a symbol of the lifelong commitment you have made to each other. Repeat after me. Callie, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. Adam, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. Lord, pour out your blessing on your servants that they may always remember their solemn promises and, trusting in your mercy, may live in love all their days through Jesus Christ our Lord. Since Adam and Callie have committed themselves to each other in marriage before God in this assembly, I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. God, the Holy Trinity, preserve you in faithfulness, strengthen you in love, and guide you till life's end. At this time, the assembly is invited to join in singing hymn 602 found in the blue hymnals, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
my faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of love, help Adam and Callie to fulfill the promises they have made today and to reflect your unfailing love in their love for each other. Give them kindness and patience, affection and understanding, happiness and contentment. Encourage their family and friends to support them in difficult days that their love for each other may continue to grow as long as they live. Gracious Father, in your goodness you bring people together into families and enrich their lives with abundant blessings. Renew the love of husbands and wives, parents and children, that they may strengthen and support one another on the way that leads to your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. It is now my privilege to introduce to you the new couple, 
Mr. and Mrs. Adam and Callie Baxter. <laughs>